Hello and welcome to Chapter 5, Loops and Iteration. Now we're uh, going to work on our fourth basic pattern of sequential, conditional, uh, store and reuse, and loops and iteration. And this is the one where we uh, teach the computer how to do things a lot. Um, we can tell to do something a million times. And so that's where um, we get the, the doggedness of computers or the fact that they're so good at doing work for us because we can set them off to a task and they'll do it until it's done. So here's a very simple loop, uh, a very simple loop. Let's put the coffee over here. Um, the keyword that we're, the, that we're going to start using is the while loop. We're also going to use the for later on. Um, and the while loop is, functions very much like an if statement. Uh, the while starts it, and then this is just like an if statement. It's a question that leads to a true or a false answer. And then there's a colon, and then there's an indented block, and then we use the deindent to determine how long the loop is, and so this print is deindented, so that indicates the end of the loop. Um, and so at some level, uh, what's, going on, what's going to happen here is it's just going to run, and if this is true, it's going to run this code. And if it's false, it's going to skip the code. In that way, it functions like an if. The place that it doesn't function like an if is after it's run the code once, it goes up and then asks the question again. And so you can think of it going back up kind of to the top of the while loop and then re-asking the question like, okay, is this going to run again? And then it's going to do that some number of times and then it's going to finish. And so that's the loop, that's the iteration. And um, we're going to make a variable, we're going to construct very carefully a variable that we call the iteration variable, and that's n. And it's a variable that's going to change, and it's our way of running the loop, but not running the loop forever. So uh, let's just run this. We come in, n is 5. Is n greater than 0? Yes, it is. So we're going to run this code. So we're going to run this code. We're going to print out 5, then we're going to subtract 1, and then we're going to go back up go back up and ask the question, is n greater than zero? And the answer is, since it's four, the answer is yes. So when it runs again, then it prints out four, subtracts it again, checks, prints three, subtracts it again, prints two, subtracts it again, prints one, subtracts it again. Now n is zero, and so it comes back up, comes back up, is this question has now become false. So it's going to take the exit. So it's going to come down and run this line right here. Then it prints blast off. And we can kind of print out the residual value of n just to sort of prove to ourselves that it ran until n was no longer greater than 0. And then 0 was the final value for n. And we carefully constructed this n. n equals, oops, go back. We carefully constructed n. We set it to 5. Then we carefully subtracted 1 each time through the loop. And then we're using that to control when to exit the loop. And so you could think of this loop as, for now, running uh, five times. True, 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 and then false, finally. So this question was true for a while, and as long as it was true, the loop ran. And then when it, finished, when it turned false, the loop stopped. And so this variable that we construct to control the loop was called the iteration variable because it tells how many times this loop is going to run over and over or otherwise known as iterate. So this is a badly constructed loop with an iteration variable that we didn't do very well. And so if we take a look at this, we start out with n5 and then this is greater than zero, so it's true, so it runs it, and then it runs it again, and n is still greater than zero. So you can pretty much see, because we're not changing n, this is going to be true, 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 dot, 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 forever, true forever. And so this is an infinite loop. And uh, it's just going to run until your computer runs out of battery or you hit the button. This is the kind of thing where you often see your, uh, your computer spinning uh, like a spinning beach ball or some other indication that your computer's super busy. It's in some kind of a loop really tight and it's running something and, and it's using up all of the processing resources of your computer. That's an infinite loop. And so the problem is, is we did nothing with the iteration variable. Now here's a different loop. And so this one uh, demonstrates a different idea. So in, in this case, we start out with n is 0, and it comes in here. And is n greater than 0? Question mark. And the answer is false. So it skips it. It doesn't run these lines of code at all. And so this loop doesn't run at all, because it comes in, asks the question, it says no, and then it skips right around it. So never run, never run. And so this actually is, sometimes you write a while loop 
on purpose like this, not quite as simple as this one. But the idea is, is this is this emphasizes that these loops are what we call zero trip. They are not even guaranteed to one run run once. They're they're going to run maybe zero times. And in this respect, it functions exactly like an if statement, right? Meaning the first time through the loop, if it's not true, it's just going to skip right by it. So there's a couple of ways of getting out of loops. In this case, I'm constructing an infinite loop because remember the kind of definition of an infinite loop is if this is going to stay true. Well, true is the constant true. So this is going to run forever. And what it's going to do is it's going to prompt with a little, uh, little arrow and then let us type and read whatever we type into the variable line. And then if the line is done, we're going to break. Now break is an executable statement. And if you hit the break, it exits the innermost loop out to the, to the place beyond the, the end of the loop. So when this runs the first time, and we say hello there, line is not done, so it prints it, so it prints out hello there, and then goes up, and then we type in again, we type finished, and so it doesn't, it's not done, so it prints it, so now comes that print statement, and then we type in done, and now this becomes true, and it comes out and runs the code beyond the end of the loop. The key is, is it doesn't go back. It's like once you've done a break, that loop is done. And so you, so you look at basically, you know, the block that is the loop. So here's kind of the loop block. And then the break goes to the line after the end of the loop block. And you can think of this as sort of like just a hyperspace jump. There is nothing really, this could be literally hundreds of lines with if statements, and you could be running and doing all kinds of stuff and running and doing all these things, you know, and these things could run all kinds of ways, right? The point is, is as soon as you hit a break statement, however much stuff is down here, however much stuff is up here, it exits to whatever the next line is beyond the end of the loop. Continue is another loop control statement, but it, dif it works differently than break. So break says, get out of this loop. Um, continue effectively says, uh, stop this iteration. We're done with this iteration. And so continue says, go up back to the top of the loop. Oops, yeah. Go up back to the top of the loop. And so here we read a line. If the first character is a pound sign, line sub zero, if that first character is a pound sign, uh, we're going to skip it. And this is a way for us to make like little comments in our typing. Um, and then we print, if the line is done, we get out and otherwise we print it. And so that's why there is no printout here because it comes in, runs, oops. It comes in, uh, hit, this is true and that goes back up, but it comes back and prints out the next one and does another thing. And so the loop continues, whereas the break uh, ends the loop. And so again, the same kind of notion that you're sort of doing all kinds of complexity, wherever you're at in this loop, you hit continue and it does not, it doesn't go any further. It goes back up and runs the question mark. It asks the question mark. And, uh, and so, it, I mean, ask the question and it might exit the loop in that particular case. But this one here is a true, this is an infinite loop that I've constructed. This is not an infinite loop because at some point the break gets us out of the loop. And so it's an infinite loop with break to escape it. And that's another uh, common way to construct a loop. So these loops that we've been drawing so far, the ones that use while as their key, key, keyword, are what are called indefinite loops. And that's because they kind of go for a while till a break hits or until some value becomes true. I mean, uh, until that, as long as that value remains true. So when it, we, it, all the ones we've done so far are easy to look at and know that uh, they look pretty good and they're probably going to finish. But there are sometimes if they're long and complex and, and their exit or termination conditions are a little more complex, we're not, it's not clear that they're really going to terminate. And so we, we can use while loops for a lot of things, but um, uh, for most of our looping, we're going to use what are called definite loops. And that's what we're going to talk about next.